Welcome, this is Mad, and today it may be bright, but there is a very dark energy coming as Mel Dragoroth and World Maker is coming. <gasps> Stay tuned, or else. It's Mad, along with Orange Among Us. Crewmate? But more importantly, um, Maldragora, the World Maker, is a very, very interesting unit. The leadership effect, I think, is meta breaking with breath potency, as long as you're doing focusing on PvP or in PvP range. Uh, for the PvE, there's better, but for uh, PvP. Right now, Breath Potency is probably the most consistent damage in the game uh, going against other players because uh, we have our dodge tanks. We have units that have Barrier, which is Meldragora. Breath pretty much ignores that. It's pretty consistent damage. With us being rank 8 now, too, that Breath Potency, breath Damage is also getting much higher uh, and very, very consistent in overall damage yes there are some units that have better damage but they can be dodged or uh, they can have be bare reflected i mean yeah some of them wait to turn four which the reflect barrier disappears for but still all in all breath potency in my mind is uh, a very scary uh, thing to go against and along with that uh, this, I think, is the best leader for GVG, as long as you have the units for it. Just because it's Breath Potency in general by 20%. Top-notch unit there. And personally, the leadership effect is probably the worst part of the unit, which is still meta-breaking. So, first one, Magic Torrent. Moderately restores its own MP and grants both uh, 1.5 uh, for Breath uh, and... Uh, Breath potency and effects. Um, so it also does MP and HP as well. So it's not based on damage, but more of the healing effects as this is down here. It's kind of hard to explain, but basically uh, it gives up. Uh, if you uh, do this again, you'll see the MP is going just a little bit more. So as long as it's not dependent on like inflicted damage uh one example would be um terry uh, using his uh, sword skill that uh, heals back uh maldragora right now doesn't have an ability like that but there could be an ability soon that is similar in that regards so that won't be increased but for magic torrent the important part here is does mp plus that breath potency which is very, very scary, uh, especially with its leadership effect, 20%. Um, that gives it 70% right there. And with Impure Breath, major damage in a fan shape that often envenomates at 50% and confuses. If you have someone that's weak to confuse, you can almost guarantee that they're going to be confused or envenomated, but confusing is a very scary thing to have, especially arena uh taking away a unit for a turn um or having the unit attack you uh it can is something that's going to absolutely turn the tides and maldragor can do that in a very large range most likely after using magic torrent on itself on top of it um and on top of it just does some heavy heavy damage um it is very expensive in MP consumption. Uh, even if you get it to plus 10, you're still looking in the upper 90s for magic, which is actually going to be an issue for Meldragora because that's his one weakness is his MP just doesn't keep up with that. But most importantly, uh, it's just still a very scary uh, turn to attack that you've got to worry about with Meldragora. Uh, finally, with Moan Exhale, uh, it's a very good skill. Uh, but personally, I think Impure Breath is just so much better. Uh, it is this damage, which right now in the meta is okay. 
uh, but does it five times and could rarely lower breath resistance. This is the really big thing. Lowering breath resistance plus the breath potency, magic torrent. You could just see how he can truly feed on himself. Um, and even on, here on PvE, uh, this can be very important. Uh, important, especially some bosses are weak to venomation or poison. Uh, that is a great uh, uh, combination overall. Now, his true his skills just work so well together. But what's really scary is his awakening skills. Uh, but I think his actually best skill right now is uh, his intrinsic. Um, it is a little short, but changed rules last for one increases attack uh, on even on sorry on odd turns and even turns increases um, agility. Uh, two turns to itself, one turn uh, for uh, <coughs> the other units, but increasing other units' attack and agility is very very important. Um, Personally, the attack is a little bit scarier, but with it being able to uh, adjust its agility, uh, it can be uh, very, very fast. Spoiler alert, this is a decently fast unit, considering how tanky it is as well. So uh, just to uh, kind of point you there, it's right there. Most importantly, though, his awakening skills, his first and his third, are very, very powerful. His first one gives him a reflect barrier for first three turns, uh, which really helps him counter a lot of things that he might be a little weak to. Um, and also, if you place it very closely with some of the units that you normally use magic to attack, um, you know, basically dodge units. Uh, and at this point, we're starting to get so many dodge units in the game. It's kind of hard to just not, uh, if you pair them closely together, uh, especially for defenses, it could be very challenging to not attack yourself. So that is a very wonderful awakening skill. You can also use that against the computer just to try to um, uh, confuse it as well. Uh, second and fourth, Wushin Zam resistance are the least interesting, but still very, very useful. Um, especially against probably one of the few units that might be kind of interested against Nocturnus. Uh, it is strong against Wushin Zam, so even that can't counter uh, Maldragora. So there, there's a very interest there. Um, but the third one here is uh, the Regenerating World. Uh, when attacked by an enemy, but not during a counterattack or follow-up, either or, restores 10% max HP and 8% max MP. This is very, very important for um, its ability to keep alive, and I'll kind of show you there. And also, you can use that to maybe get another impure breath out of it, uh, and I'm going to give you some ideas through, through there. And just like uh, the third and fifth, the third skill is going to get plus five. Here's Molten Exhale. I kind of wish Impure Breath was at the bottom, but eh, whatever. And also at fifth, you get an extra 100 HP, which with Regenerating World, that's 10 more. All by itself, it gives for HP per time it gets attacked. With its HP and defense combination, it has a boatload of HP in general. Uh, even at uh, rank one, it's uh, 11, nine, or rank zero, sorry, it's 11, 19. Uh, it gets up to 15, 23, which is a very large increase. Uh, three hearts is where I'm going. It's going to be around 13, 13, 25. Uh, that and the defense there are very nice combined. They're slightly higher defense units overall, but with the HP and the ability to get 10% of its HP back, uh, is very powerful. Just Sorrow Discontinuum uh, at plus 10 should average probably around uh, mine, should get around 700 to 750 on this unit uh, with 1500 HP. That's 150 back. All of a sudden, you go from 700, even 750, down to 600, 550 damage. Um, and that just gives you the opportunity to be attacked maybe 
three one more time just by that self along with potential other ways to counteract that even units like sorrow will have a hard time taking down Meltracara while it's got to be afraid of its own uh, abilities to uh, confuse and envenomate and do deal damage so it's a very strong unit uh, main weaknesses here uh, wisdom and attack are low attack is okay 378 but you don't really care about that you're going to be doing breath attacks for the first four or five turns attack is only at the end when you're kind of desperate if you're even going that long especially in pvp and pve it's not quite a great unit just because it's mp is uh, relatively low considering all the other excuse me skills it has um its movement is good at three weight 65 is low but that mp as i say for 446 and it's 357 when it's uh out uh in pure breath even there you're talking around 97 you're only going to be able to use it three times maybe four um and it's completely out of gas not for pvp not for gvg but uh it is still relatively low his first preferred weapon i like the demon dagger partially because you have the molten exhale and you can also get uh impure breath on it as well the agility and mp are very useful uh, and it gives you breath power plus 4%. This is one of the S units, uh, sorry, S weapons in uh, DQ10 that we're going through right now. You can get that via the event. But more importantly, um, increasing the MP is also good for when it gets hit. It can maybe do another attack. But this is something that you should build for PvE, especially if you're uh, trying to go a little bit long you have an ability to keep it damage not super high uh, and be able to keep it healing for a while you can regain the mp to uh, for the envenomation etc but personally i like the lollipop. Lolly, lolly, lollipop my lollipop can get around 150 i think hp uh, that just gives it right then there 15 more hp every time it gets attacked um and, you know, I'm probably going to get, I want to get this unit to three awakening. With that, I should get it right around 1500, 1550. Uh, but if I had it five awakened, I could talk almost 1800 HP, which is just absolutely insane. Or sorry, 1700, not 18. I can't do math right now today. But still, that's 170 HP coming back every time it gets attacked. You could just see how the lollipop works really, really well, depending on how you built your lollipop. Physical power would be wasted. You wouldn't have the breath power. But having the ability to heal a little bit more along with just having more damage being taken in uh, G in Guild Wars and PvP and Arena, I think that overrules that just a little extra damage. That's the way I'm going to build my Metal Dragon Raw. Um, and so... Uh, right now, my Eric is using um, uh, the lollipop. Eric is going to uh, be taken over place by the World Maker, uh, just because it is just that much better of a unit. Uh, it's preferred skills. I have blunt. To be honest, uh, other people might say, "Hey, I want to put a buff on here." Personally, um, for Mel Dragora, blunt is. Probably the only one that you might be interested in. Lowering the ability unit that's going to be attacking. It's pretty important. Uh, it allows you to heal more of the damage you're taking. And allow it to withstand more damage, which means you can deal more damage. But more importantly for me, I think not having a skill on Mount Dragora is great because you're going to, he's going to want to be using the first skill, Magic Torrent. Going to buff up your um, breath damage by 50%. Second turn, you're probably going to do in pure breath. And then, boom, even the computer computer might do another thing. It's not always the most intelligent, but ha focusing itself for the magic torrent, I think, is more important than worrying about buffing up someone else. People will 
like to have a buff skill. I'm not just saying buff. You can use any other skills like that because then they can force the computer to kind of play a cowardly role and hide and delay the things. And that's fine. But personally for me, uh, I I want my Metal Dragger ready to be unleashing its full potential on its fan. And uh, turn two, turn one, it will probably it should just do its high torrent stay relatively put turn two it will increase its agility uh and that should go out and should be able to uh deal some damage overall pros these pros should really have like five pages to itself but i'll try to keep it short uh this is an s s plus class unit change the rules is very powerful Increasing damage on odd and agility on even turns makes this unit worthwhile even for the free-to-play players who can who get it by pure luck. This unit is very powerful just from that effect, and it requires no awakenings. And getting the first awakening gets you a nice barrier for three turns. That is a great boost by itself. Along with its incredible stats, it still has 300 something de defense 119 uh, attack it is just a absolute beast <coughs> very strong uh gvg leadership effect for the breath potency uh for free to play players who do get uh battle tracker of the world maker even using it along with like the green dragon and other free dragons that we have really is a powerful way to boost up your arena team even if you don't have a super high amount of resources they have dragons and this is a boss but dragons generally are your breath units they have high hp high defense they can last a while and with the breath potency and breath damage being fairly high now that just gives you an absolutely insane amount of damage that you can do that's usually a pretty large fan shape gives you more overall this just allows you to go through that and if you get like dragon war true form who also can has very power of breath but doesn't fall under dragon breath um you know you could just see where this goes uh the bounce and high hp defense makes them very hard to kill as well for the and that's just one awakening overall it's cons it's mp consumption's high it's a stretch. Uh, will I pull? Yes. I keep going up and down here. The hero is a very powerful character that will be coming soon. But I am going to go to the third awakening here. More importantly, I highly suggest that free-to-play players use, right now, at the very least, a good portion of your attack points on the world maker i think it will be a little bit better for free-to-play players than the hero yes the hero has some very interesting skills as well uh, but i do think the world maker is worthwhile to try and go for um especially if you can get um that ah, actually i'm not even worried about the first awakening uh it, it is just such a powerful unit uh because of the breath potency and change the rules with this intrinsic skill is just so important. Uh, it does change the meta. Also, being able to confuse and envenomate with a very powerful breath damage just makes it such a scary character. Uh, and it will be a um, free-to-play and pay-to-play. Uh, very, very used uh, in the arena. It is a meta changing unit and it's just hard for me to say hey no save your sources for the hero uh the hero for me i do have the nostalgia factor i haven't played 10 but it's still i just see so much power um in the uh, uh guild guild wars and pvp arena and soon we're going to have um the real time arena as well and you know for a damn fact that you're going to be facing a lot of these as well you might as well have one as well if you can get it so good luck on everybody who's pulling it 
Unfortunately, the A unit dark brownie here is not the greatest. Um, it has decent HP, decent attack, but uh, almost all of its skills are a wheelhouse around, and all of them are. Um, so it does have the muster extra strength, which can be very good because it doubles its own physical power for one turn. Rambunctiousness and spinning wheel are the uh, two skills there. Rambunctiousness can lower defense for three turns, while uh, spinning wheel is just a higher damaging one. Personally, um, if you're going for World Breaker, you're probably going to get a couple of Dark Brownies. The first one gives you plus one, uh, to gives you three movements, usually just two. Third Awakening will occasionally get you a 15% damage barrier, which is actually useful for it because it's got to get up and close. Uh, it does have enough HP, so if you get it all the way to five hearts, um, you can get 150 um, HP barrier without, you know, with whatever weapon that it has. Um, and even without it, you're still talking at around 80 HP barrier, which is still pretty good for an A unit. But all in all, uh, with its low agility uh, and its low range, I would add a attack skill that's that gives you some range. Um, it has no elements, so you could just add any random element skill you want. Uh, but all in all, it's just because of its low agility and its uh, limited range of skills, it can be pretty annoying to use. Personally, out of all the units uh, for the ace that you could pull, I think this is the weakest. But uh, we're not interested in the A. We're definitely interested in the S unit here. So I hope you guys did enjoy this. Um, I don't really have much else to say. I definitely went a little deeper than I normally do for uh, the World Maker. But I wanted to make sure people understood why this unit was just so goddamn powerful. So I hope you guys enjoy. Good luck. And I will be pulling... Uh, Probably Friday time period, maybe Saturday. I will post those polls uh, as quickly as I can online. Um, as I tend to do a little better, not pulling it directly when the banner's up. Bye, everyone.